an All-American, one of the top players in ACC history, NCAA champion, National Player of the Year. Charlotte Smith is one of only two women's basketball players to have her jersey retired at UNC. Following an outstanding college career, she would play eight seasons in the WNBA. When her playing career ended, Charlotte set her sights on her next goal, coaching. One of the compelling reasons why I came to the University of North Carolina was Coach Sylvia Hatchell. You know, I came from a family of great faith and we were a close-knit family, and that's something that I was looking for in my college experience. Charlotte was an assistant for nine seasons under her mentor, Coach Hatchell. Good shot. Before accepting her first head coaching opportunity at Elon University. When I first met the team, I said, what are some things that are important to you? They said, my faith and my family. When they said those two lines there, I knew that this was the place for me and this would be a place where I could make a huge impact. Touches, touches. I love her as a coach, but even more as a person and a role model. She cares about us not only on the court as players, but also off the court as people, and that's been one of her goals to let us know that since day one. When I'm coaching my players, I'm, I'm always thinking, you know, am I preparing them for a lifetime of success? She's always told us that when the ball stops bouncing, there's so much more to life. She's very adamant about teaching us life lessons. We will overcome adversity and fight to conquer our goals. We hold each other accountable. We are our greatest competition. You want three, one, two, three. Hey, yeah. you. Leading her own program, Charlotte came into her own, setting a new school record for wins by a first-year head coach. In the midst of success, her faith was about to be tested. One day, while stopped at an intersection, Charlotte had an encounter with an angry motorist he would change her life forever. He was infuriated and he proceeded to get out of his car. And I saw out of my side mirror that he was getting out of his car and I was a little intimidated because I didn't know what he was gonna do. I didn't know what he had, if he had a weapon, what he was gonna say. By the time he got to my window, he just proceeded to yell the N word at me. And he said that you have to get out of the way. And I was shocked because that was the first time that I had ever experienced racism in my life. Um, I was angry. You know, there was a lot of words of anger that were floating through my head. And right at the moment when I opened my mouth to speak, the only thing that I could say is, God bless you. And the more he began to scream the N word at me and say that I have to get out of the way, I just continued to say, God bless you, God bless you. Went to the police station, you know, to no avail. And you know, I kind of felt really disappointed because to me, um, it was a serious issue. You know, it wasn't just the fact that he called me the N word, it was that I felt like my life was in jeopardy because he proceeded to get out of his car and come to my car. I felt threatened. The impact from this encounter would be widespread. Wow. I was broken. It was so disappointing. But at the same time, you know, I think when we go through situations like that, it's so easy to make generalizations and assume that everyone is like that. It was hard, you know, because uh, there were times when I would see like a white gentleman and I wondered in the back of my mind, does he see me this way? So it, you know, people say that, you know, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words may never hurt, but they do, they do. And it took me a while to be able to see people the way that I was raised, you know, to see everybody as people who had good intentions and a good heart. I truly believe there's always purpose behind every pain and that God wants to get glory. I knew that God wanted to get glory out of that situation. It's like I preach all of these great things to my team and, you know, this is the one experience where I have to live it out. And, you know, I always tell them that when things arise, when situations arise, you have two choices. You can either be bitter or you can be better. And I chose to be better from that situation and to rise above it. Charlotte found relief in one of her favorite hobbies, her music. I had spent a little time pondering about song and putting my feelings into music. My music is my outlet. And so at that time I had the lyrics to the song, Lord Give Us Your Heart. There were a lot of people in the athletic administration and the entire Elon body that actually uh, had a meeting with myself to see if there was anything that they could do for me to help me overcome this incident. And I said, the one thing that you can help me do is to help this song come to life. With the help of Elon's School of Music, her song became a reality.
When Lord Give Us Your Heart was released, it quickly reached tens of thousands through the power of social media. I just heard from a lot of people like, wow, um, what an impact, what a powerful song. That is a song that should be heard all over the world. It's a song that speaks to the climate of the world today and everybody needs to hear that song. I think that song, it was awesome for her to channel like a negative event that she experienced and to turn that into something positive that could influence other people. I think that's great and that speaks volumes about the person that she is. I got an inbox message from a lady who had um, biracial children and they had experienced racism and she said, you know, this song helped me to get through that experience. So I've received so many positive responses. As she reflects on her experience, Charlotte believes there's one lesson we all can learn. It really all just starts with love. You know, if we could find a way to just love people where they are, because that's what God does. He loves us exactly where we are. Um, and just understand that this is just, this is just a shell and that, you know, I have feelings, people have feelings. And, you know, my thing is, is I, I really wish that I could meet that gentleman again someday just to, just to have a conversation because I think understanding comes through conversation just so he can see that I'm human, I have feelings, um, and then maybe that would change his heart. The greatest legacy that you can leave is a legacy of love. And if you can leave that legacy, then you've made a mark.